Hi, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, we are here on the east side of the, the planet, of the east side of the country, I should say. Um, it is at uh, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and I know on the Pacific Coast, you guys are joining us at 10 a.m., so welcome. It's good to see you here. I am so happy that you have chosen to spend a little time with me. We've got a lot of great things to talk about, um, but I always like to ask you a question and kind of take a little poll at the beginning. So first of all, I would love to know where you're watching from. Like what, what city are you watching from? Um, we get folks from all over the world watching. So pop over there, what city you're in, uh, what state you're in, if you're um, outside of the US where you are, it's always fun to see how far flung uh, we reach. But here's my big question for you. So a baby quilt, what is your preference on the backing fabric? Do you prefer flannel on your baby quilts for the back? Do you prefer just cotton? Do you prefer a minky cuddle microfiber uh, fabric? All right, so those are your three choices. Well, I mean, or if you have something else like you know, like satin or something, put that on there. But um, flannel, the cuddle or minky, and then, or just regular cotton. What do you like to put on the back of your um, kiddo, your little baby quilts? Um, I have uh, noticed that my, I, I typically have baby quilts kind of stacked in the closet, kind of ready to go just in case. And um, I was looking at the, them the other day and wondering um, what other people choose to put on the backs of their baby quilts. So um, I know we've got people filing in. Olivia, where are we, uh, people putting in where they're from? Yeah, we've got um, Michigan. Michigan. Pennsylvania. Uh, multiple states in Pacific Northwest. Oh, good. Pacific Northwest. Okay. I hope you guys are having some coffee and uh, enjoying the start of your day with me. Yeah. Anywhere else? We've got Texas. Texas. Um, Canada. Canada. Fabulous. And Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Ohio. Ohio, wonderful. All right, we've got people filing in from all over the place. Um, so just so that you know, um, we are, I think, Kelsey, is this our third year or is it next month? No, it's this month. It's this month? So this is year three, which kind of blows my mind because we really started this um, uh, to try to, we had so many folks who wanted to be a part of our in-house um, guild and asked us to just put up a camera in the corner uh, whenever we held it and so we thought well we'll put it on the internet and see if anybody's interested and so here we are three years later um, so I appreciate you guys uh, blocking out your day I know you have a lot of choices about where you spend your time and I appreciate you spending it with me I do want to make sure that you're signed up for our Quilt of Joy newsletter. In our newsletter, we have lots of great tutorials and worksheets, as well as information about upcoming events or specials that you may want to know about. And we typically send those out um, Friday morning. Um, during the week of Clubhouse, we will send out a reminder um, that day to watch. Um, but be sure to sign up for our newsletter. There's lots of great stuff in there. We do not sell your information. We do not spam you. Um, you can control how often we send you emails. So um, I encourage you to join our email list. There's lots of great information I think will help you um, on your quilting journey in our newsletter. Um, and then it is the first week of the month. So we have a new limited edition glide thread pack. And our fairy this month is our shamrock fairy. And our shamrock fairy brought to us three spectacular colors together. There is cosmic, there is pine and there's bright yellow. Um, and so those colors together um, look amazing. And um, if you are looking for um, a way to kind of slowly build your thread stash and bring in some nice colors that you can use on a lot of different quilts, our limited edition thread packs of the month are a good way to do that. We sell them both in the full cone, so the 5,000 meter cone, as well as in the 1,000 meter cone. And of course, these are all glide threads, so they're 40 weight. Um, they're a tri-lobal polyester, have a little bit of a sheen to them. They're actually um, also very popular with machine embroidery uh, systems as well. So if you are a big um, Kimberbell fan, for example, uh, and you enjoy machine embroidery, um, this, these colors are a great way to kind of build your stash. But we love them for our long arm machines and for our sit down domestic machines uh, for machine quilting. And then um, we uh, will have a live chat on March the 16th at 1 o'clock um, Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific in the Clubhouse there on Facebook in our Facebook um, group, the Quilted Joy Clubhouse, as well as on YouTube. And that's just where, you, you know, we chat. Whatever you want to chat about, let's chat about it. Um, we get a lot of questions about 
Oh, quilting questions, piecing questions. We'll talk a little bit about the Love of Quilting show. Like whatever you wanna chat about, we can chat about it. Um, and we do put out a call for questions beforehand so that we kind of are prepared. If you have a specific question, I can kind of prepare an answer for you. But otherwise, um, I'm willing to talk about whatever you wanna talk about. So uh, I hope you'll join me. And um, do know that all of our uh, question and answer sessions, as well as all of the Clubhouse sessions for the last three years are all recorded. And you can watch them over on our Quilt Joy YouTube channel um, until you're sick of me, right? So there's a lot there that you can dive into. Um, and then I wanted to tell you, I'm sure you know, that March is um, the National Quilting Month. And so to celebrate every Thursday in March, we are giving away a five yard bundle of fabric on our Quilted Joy Facebook page and on our Quilted Joy Instagram page. So um, you could win, it's, it's five one yard cuts. So five total yards of fabric and they're all coordinated to go together and they come with a free pattern as well. And so um, we will be giving that away um, every Thursday in March. So um, join us and maybe you'll win. And then I'd love to see what you do with the fabric as well. All right, so in 2022, we have been talking about rulers and different ways to use rulers and what to consider as you pull a ruler and, and think about a ruler. And last month we talked about how to use rulers to go around applique and things to consider, things to think about, rulers that are good for that. Um, I wanna go back to the basics this month and talk about stitch in the ditch and how to use rulers when you're stitching in the ditch. Now, I'm gonna be using this big, beautiful APQS Millennium, but you could be using a sit-down machine and do stitch in the ditch with a ruler um, and with a sit-down machine as well. So let's just talk about um, some of the things to consider and, and define when I say stitch in the ditch, really what that is, to make sure we're all on the same page. So when you sew your seams together, and you press those seams to the side, so you press them typically to the dark side, when you go to stitch, um, with your long arm machine or your sit down domestic, you have a choice. You could stitch right in that seam line and that would be the ditch. Um, and that would be what we call stitch in the ditch. If you stitch just to the side of the ditch, maybe like a quarter of an inch outside of the ditch, that would be considered more like outline stitching. One thing to consider is the way that it's pressed. So if you have a quilt top and the seams were pressed open so not to the dark side, but pressed open, then I would caution you not to stitch right in the ditch because your needle could pierce the thread used to piece those uh, fab the fabric together. So if you're talking about a quilt that has press seams open, I would have you stitch just to the side of the ditch. So even like an eighth of an inch, just a, just a little whisker of a hair outside the ditch. Um, and that will keep you from piercing that thread that was used to piece with it. Now, as far as like, okay, so think about there's a high side to the ditch and a low side to the ditch. Because if you press your seams to the dark, there's more bulk there. So there, one side of the seam is just to elevate it ever so slightly. It's the higher side of the ditch and one side is lower. So um, typically we're gonna aim for that lower side and stitch right in that ditch. Now the thread that we choose to stitch in the ditch is going to influence how much that ditch talks to us. So I just wanted to pull a thread here and this one is Omni. This one is, um, they call it a Tex 35. I would call it a, a 35 weight. Tex is just another way to, to describe weight. It's a fairly thick thread. So if I were to use this thread to stitch in the ditch, it is not super forgiving. Plus it's got a color to it as well that's gonna talk quite a bit. Um, so I'm gonna move this machine back just so you can see this ditch here. And so if I were to use this, this color would look great on that green, but if I'm gonna stitch on the low side of the ditch, which is that white fabric, when I stitch on the low side of the ditch, if I am not right in the ditch, if I wobble out of the ditch, which is entirely and, and likely possible, then this uh, green thread on the white fabric is really going to yell at me, not to mention the fact that it's a pretty thick thread as well. So there's just not a lot of forgiveness built into a thicker thread like this. So it's not a thread that I would choose for stitch in the ditch. So that, like I said, is like a 30 weight um, thread in my mind, 35 weight maybe. Let's take a look at another one. So this one is Glide 
And this one is a 40 weight and it has a sheen to it. Same issue though, right? If I am not, if I am right in that ditch, fine. But as soon as I wobble out of the ditch, this is gonna yell at me. Um, by the way, this particular color of glide, I'm just gonna flip on the built-in black light. Sometimes if you are stitching white thread on white fabric, so I know I have a, a lime green here, but just imagine if I decided I wanted to stitch this ditch with white thread, um, I might choose a thread that glows under black light because I can just see what the heck I'm doing so much easier than um, if I have the regular light on. So this is not a thread, this lime green, I guess that's not really lime green, I, a hot yellow. Um, I don't think this would be my choice um, for a stitch in the ditch um, either. So let's take a look at what would be my choice. So the first one I wanna show you this one is um, a monopoly. So it's a polyester based monofilament, monopoly. This uh, particular one is made by um, Superior Threads. And what's nice about it is that because it's polyester uh, core, when I pull, it has, you can see, well, I don't know that you can see it because it's invisible, right? Um, but when I pull it, there's a little bit of a give before it breaks. And so it's just a little bit more forgiving to use on my quilt. And of course it comes in smoke and it comes in clear. So it kind of depends on what color fabric I want to use it with. Um, but I will say that the monopoly, it has a little bit of a sheen to it. So it will pick up the light just a little bit, but it's super forgiving and great to use um, in for stitch in the ditch work. Um, and it's polyester based, so it's easy to run as well. You can get it in a cone, you can get it in a spool. Um, you can also get um, some pre-wound bobbins for it if you want to get like pre-wound um, monofilament. If you wind your own bobbins with the monofilament, my suggestion to you is to wind them about halfway because um, when you release the tension on this monofilament, it's kind of like um, a life raft on a boat. It kind of whoosh, it kind of expands when it when you uh, take the tension off of that thread as you're winding it. So don't wind your bobbin full with the stuff and then expect it to stay in the bobbin. It's gonna expand as soon as you stop winding. So wind your bobbin about halfway or get one of those pre-wound bobbins. Okay, so the other one that I wanna talk to you about and is this one, and this one is my current favorite. Um, and I don't know, Kelsey, can you see that at all? Yeah, okay, <laughs> you're gonna have to trust me that there is, I wonder, maybe if I put a black, maybe. okay. All right, I'm gonna put my, my drawing pad here. Yeah. Can you see it there? Okay, good, now people are like, okay, there actually is thread there, she's not lying to us. Um, so this thread is 100 weight. This thread is Micro Quilter. It's by Superior Threads. And this is my new favorite for Stitch in the Ditch. Super skinny, super forgiving. It just melts into the fibers of the cotton. Um, it's, if you wobble outside the ditch, you're not gonna be able to tell. Um, very, very skinny thread. Great, it runs great in my machine. Um, we actually have a bundle put together. It's a Stitch in the Ditch bundle um, of micro quilter colors that are um, very, very common to use for Stitch in the Ditch. So you might uh, take a look at those. This particular one that I'm using right now is the 007 color. Um, so it's like James Bond, right? It blends in. And um, it's called silver. In my mind, it's kind of a canvasy color. And it just um, mimics the colors next to it. It just, it's a great thread to kind of melt away into the background. So that is the thread that we're gonna be using. And I will say that typically, um, when I'm using something this skinny, I'm gonna grab from my APQS long arm machine, I'm gonna grab a, a 16 gauge needle. So I'm making a much smaller hole. And then for my bobbin, I certainly could wind a bobbin that is 100 weight. Um, I could wind it myself. But what I've been doing lately is grabbing, um, this is Deco Bob, so it's made by Wonderfill. It's an 80 weight thread. And um, I like to run this kind of light gray color with that 007 color on the top. And it's um, an 80 weight polyester, super skinny. It works really well with the micro quilter. And I know that that kind of goes against common 
thought process that if I have a hundred weight on the top, I should have either a hundred weight on the bobbin or go skinnier. But this 80 weight stuff is so stinking skinny. It's just, it's okay. It's been totally fine for me. So I've been putting these two together, um, the hundred weight on the top and the 80 weight on the bobbin um, quite a bit lately. And I've even been using these these 80 weights um, for regular quilting as well. It's just, they, they work really well for um, that hundred weight. I love pre-wound bobbins. They speed me up. They are evenly wound. I don't have to stop to wind anything. Um, it all kind of makes sense to my brain. Okay, so let's look at some different rulers to use for Stitch in the Ditch. Some rulers, let's take a look at this one. So this one is um, the Quilted Pineapple Edge uh, 5 inch, and this one is the uh, Quilters Groove, Groove Pro Mini. Uh, and both of these are fabulous. Both of these fit my hands really well. If you can see, can you see the markings on them at all, Kelsey? Towards the, towards the camera? Okay, perfect. So you can see the, some of the markings there on it, and they make sense to my brain. Super makes sense to my brain. This one also super makes sense to my brain. So you wanna find something that fits your hand, but also fits your brain. Um, I like this one because it has those um, diagonal lines that are really strong. And then um, rather than lots and lots and lots of lines, there's dash lines on here. And it just, it makes total sense to my little brain. Um, the Quilter's Groove one has thicker lines to show me where the inch marks are. Um, and then the dash lines to show me where the quarter inch lines are. Both of those are great. Now, if I'm gonna stitch in the ditch, so I'm gonna move this over. If I want to stitch in this ditch, I have to remember that my needle is a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So when I put my ruler down, I need to put my ruler down a quarter of an inch away from the ditch so that when I put my hopping foot up against the ruler, my needle will land in the ditch. So there's a little bit of visual, like I have to kind of watch that, right? I have to be careful and watch that I'm putting my ruler a quarter inch away from that seam. So those are very typical, but I want to show you two other ones that are cool, cool, cool. And these, these have molars is what I call them. So see the little teeth? See there in this little tooth here? Um, this one is Lavender Lines 1, and um, it has a um, little teeth that you can put on that seam line. And then when my needle, when my hopping foot drops into that space, do you see how it's already given my hopping foot the room it needs to place my needle right in that seam? So that one is a shorter one as far as um, the distance between the two molars. And this one is um, that's made by Beth Ann Nemish with White Arbor Quilting. Uh, we have these on the website if you're interested. Um, and then she has a larger one as well. And this one is um, Garden Lines. And again, we still have the molars, right? We still have the molars. So we, we can line the molar up on the seam, um, both ends, and then that gives me the room so that my, my needle will fit in that um, space right where it needs to to hit the seam. Um, it's just a little longer of a space than this one, than the Lavender Lines one. So you can find rulers with molars. You can find rulers that are just straight edge that um, don't have those molars. Um, so it's just up to you how you want to handle it. So let's see, what do I want to do? I'm going to grab, I think I'm going to grab this Lavender Lines that we were just talking about. And I'm going to bring this down and you know, Kelsey, this camera, when I bring it down, it's gonna hit that. I don't think I'm gonna go all the way because when I bring the camera down, it's gonna hit this front pole. We got these cool, um, here, can you go to the wide shot so you can show them? So APQS came out with, with handles that can be added to the um, 2020, 2019 and newer machines. And they're like these um, praying mantis handles. They're so cool. Um, so we've got the camera attached to one and the other one can go up in the air so that I have room here now to put my hand to do ruler work. Um, love these things. They also articulate this way. They come standard on the Millie 30, but you can get them for um, the Millie, the, the Freddy, or the Lucy, as long as it's a 2019 or newer. So since I have that camera down, that camera on that um, handle, I can't come all the way to um, this edge. So we'll just start here. And I'm just gonna go um, needle down and needle up. And this panel, by the way, you know, we've talked about how nice panels are. 
to use to play and to learn. Um, they're like little sandboxes. And so this particular panel is Mulberry Lane. And so it has um, squares printed on it. So it's a really great way to play with rulers, to get to know Stitch in the Ditch, very low key way because it's not an expensive panel at all. We just put um, a small white border on it and then a green border and called it done. So take a look at panels in a new light because they're wonderful ways to learn and to play. All right, so I did needle down, needle up. I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle in the down position. I have my molar on the edge of the seam and I have my molar at the top on the edge of that seam. And then I'm just gonna turn my motor on and I'm gonna work my way up. And now in real life, I would have probably tacked that seam where I started, or when I come around and finish the seam, um, I could go ahead and kind of go over the top of it. I do have a ruler base on. Remember, you all pinky swore promise to me that you would not use rulers without a ruler base, so that's super important. All right, so now I'm ready to go across this seam. Again, I'm gonna put my um, molar into the seam and that will give myself the exact space needed so that my needle lands right in there and I don't have to worry about anything. And in fact, that um, those molars kind of, you can feel them kind of hit and press into that seam. And if you have any questions about stitching the ditch, go ahead and pop them there in the chat and we can talk about what your questions might be. All right, I'm gonna come down this one. And I'm gonna come down this one. And of course there's only so far, like I said, before I hit that um, camera onto my front bar, unfortunately. So there you go, I just hit it. I don't know if you saw it, but I just hit it. So then I would keep on going around, but that is how I would stitch in the ditch um, using a ruler that has the teeth on it. Let's look at how to use a ruler without uh, teeth, just a standard straight edge. So I'm just gonna take some tacking stitches and then I'm going to go ahead and bring my bobbin thread up to the top and make a snip. Olivia, let me know if we have any questions that come in. We've got some thread questions. Okay, thread questions are good. Um, they're about monopoly, if it can take washing and drying, and how you adjust the tension because it's so scanty. So monopoly is a polyester thread, so it behaves just like any other polyester thread. So yes, you can wash it and dry it. You might be thinking about a nylon monofilament. So there are nylon monofilaments out there, and for a nylon monofilament, and this time I'm gonna use the Quilter's Groove Pro Mini, that one that I said makes sense to my brain, um, the way that it is marked. And I've got my, my um, ruler where I have it visually a quarter inch away from that seam, and then I'm gonna head up that ditch. So on a nylon monofilament, you would want to keep it out of the sunlight, you would want to keep it out of the dryer because it'll kind of yellow on you, but a polyester monofilament, it is behaving just like any other polyester thread. Um, and then you asked me, Tension. Tension, yeah. So any of these, even this 100 weight thread, you are absolutely gonna have to change your tension a little bit because it's skinnier thread. Um, the monofilament, um, the polyester monofilament, again, that should behave just like a regular polyester, but you know, if you have a long arm machine, you are going to have to learn how to adjust tension with every single type of, every single combination that you can find um, from like what batting you're using, what types of uh, quilt top, uh, fabric you're using, to the size needle, to the size, um, the type of thread, all of that is gonna have to be adjusted as you go. But as far as like some special way to thread the machine or something, I have not found that to be necessary. But you will need to, on a longer machine, you'll need to adjust your tension a little bit. And notice for these, um, I'm using a smaller um, ruler. I like to use a smaller ruler for stitch in the ditch just because I want to keep my fingers splayed out. I want to keep it very stable. I want to be very safe. So having a longer ditch ruler typically isn't what I grab. What I grab is these small ones. And then I just, you know, you got to think about, do I want to ditch everything? Um, what do I want to ditch? What don't I want to ditch? Because ditching is going to take some time. But if you've ever seen a quilt, and I'm gonna to have to hit stop here because it's gonna hit that front bar. If you've ever seen a quilt that's not ditched versus a quilt that is ditched, it is um, dramatically different, um, the look of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and break my threads and then I want to show you a mistake that I made 
because I think it'll be helpful for you to see. Um, while I was, I was talking to you here, um, I stitched on the high side of the ditch rather than the low side of the ditch. So this thread is on that green fabric. Again, it's a hundred weight and it's like a canvasy color. Um, can you see that very well at all? Barely, yeah, and I can barely see it too. Um, that's why I love that hundred weight because if I wobble out of the ditch, it's gonna be pretty darn hard to see that it happened and that color is gonna behave really well in lots of different colors of fabric. Okay, so this Mulberry Lane, let's just look at how many opportunities that you have. So you could go around um, the interior of this block. You could also go around the exterior of that block. There are lots of different ways. This little house, to use your ruler and to go up this little house with your straight edge ruler, all of that is gonna give you stitch in the ditch work um, and practice. And it's low key because if you make a mistake, it's okay, it's just a panel, it's okay. The dog will look really good sitting on it. Um, or um, you might have a, a, a friend or a charity or something like that that is um, looking to have a quilt uh, from you. So just low key, don't go grab your, um, your you know, Hawaiian applique that you've been working on for five years to practice your ditch work. Go grab a, a panel and it'll be much lower stress involved. Any other questions that came in, Olivia? Yes. Uh -huh. um, Yeah. So wh what's the order of stitching? So think about stitch in the ditch as the bones to your skeleton. Before you go put jewelry on, you're going to need some bones first. So stitch in the ditch always comes first. Um, a stitch in the ditch will lock down your areas, it'll stabilize your areas so that when you go in with some free motion or digital uh, diagonal lines, like whatever else you put inside, it'll be stabilized, the block will be stabilized. So you always do your ditch work first. Now, notice I did not say do your ditch work for the whole quilt and then roll it all back and then start over again. I don't do that. I, I quilt what I can see between my bars. And so I would do my ditch work, what I can see between my bars, and then I would switch to a different thread. Let's say I wanted to use glide thread in the rest of it. I would switch to a different thread, do all of that work, and then roll it forward. Now, depending on, and roll it forward, and go back to my micro quilter and put, um, or, or the monopoly, and put the um, ditch work down, and then go and do my background fillers or whatever design work I'm gonna do with whatever chosen thread um, that will be. Now, one of the things you could do, depending on the size of the block you're working on, is you could leapfrog it. And what I mean by that is I could ditch what I can see between my bars, roll it forward, ditch the next row that I can see behind my bars, roll it backwards, put in my glide thread, do my background filler, my beautiful design work, roll it forward, do my background filler, my beautiful design work, roll it forward, switch to micro quilter, do two rows, come back, put in my regular glide thread, do two rows, switch to my micro quilter. Hopefully that makes sense, it's leapfrogging. It, it, it depends on how big of a throat you're working on, machine. It depends on how much space you have between your bars. Think about a newspaper or magazine, when you roll it up, it splays out so you want to be cautious about how much unquilted space you have if you roll it up into your take-up bar, if you're on a, a long arm machine. So that's why I say it depends on the size of the block that you're working on. Um, typically on my big old 26 inch throat millennium, um, like with a 12 inch block, I could do that. I could leapfrog. I could do all the ditch work in one row, roll it forward, do all the ditch work in the second row, roll it back, get my, my thread I'm using for my design, and do one row, roll it forward, do one row, go back to my ditch uh, thread, two rows, that leapfrog um, with a 12 inch block on a 26 inch throat machine. If I was on my 22 inch Lenny, it might be a little bit more, I might be able to only do it one row at a time, ditch it, switch my threads, do the design work, roll it forward, ditch it, switch my thread, do my design work. So um, there's no hard and fast answer, it really depends on the throat and the size of the, the blocks you're working on. Other questions? 
Yeah, basting, yeah, you gotta baste or things like move on you. Yeah, so, so I, that goes without saying. You always want to, um, especially on a long arm machine, when you lay your quilt top down, baste the outside edge, the top, the outside edge, because otherwise things are gonna slide around on you, and then go ahead and start your ditch work. So great question. All right, somebody's really thinking. They said, where in the world? You've got this little, this little guy. Where are you going to put him? How are you going to load him to a long arm machine? So great question, because if I put him in the back where I have my cones of thread, I'm going to have this exit off the top of the cone, which will actually, the top of the spool, which will actually add twist to that thread. And so my thread will break more frequently because I'm adding twist rather than taking the twist away. So if you are gonna work with a spool of thread, the spool of thread needs to exit off the spool horizontally in the same fashion it was loaded at the factory. And so there are some, um, uh, we have a couple here. You might put a, um, it's that uh, thread, what's the name of it, Kelsey? I know, it's a thread adapter, superior uh, thread adapter. And it's made for um, it's made for sit down machines, so that you can actually run cones of thread on a sit down machine. But it also has a way that you can run spools of thread on it, and it's not very expensive. And what I do is I go to the hardware store and I get that um, foamy sticky tape, and then I stick that on top of the machine up here, so that the the spool of thread will exit off of that holder and come down to my needle so that I'm having an exit in the same way it was wound at the factory and I'm not adding twist to it. Did you find it, Olivia? Yeah. Perfect, okay, so look down there in the description. Um, there are other brands out there that just happens to be the brand that we sell. Um, you can also get one that's specifically, um, it's, it's made by Hartley. Um, you may, if you have an APQS machine, you may have heard that company before. Same idea, um, uh, we just, we have the superior one um, in stock that you might enjoy. Any other questions that came through? Um, about the spool versus the cone, if, what if the spool is cross-wound? So if it's cross-wound, then it was wound at the factory from the top. So it needs to exit off the top. So you just have to look, how was it wound at the factory? And that's the way I want it to exit. If it was wound from the side, it needs to come off the side. If it was wound from the top, it needs to come off from the top. We want to get as much twist off as we can before it hits the eye of the needle. We have a super long path before it gets the eye of the needle. And then once it gets the eye of the needle, it's going to go through that eye 30 to 40 times. So we are going to put that thread through a whole lot of abuse. So we need to be very careful about how we act, ask it to exit off the cone that we're not making things even harder on it. Any other questions? Um, just about the giveaway. The giveaway, yes. Um, so go to our Instagram page, Quilted Joy's Instagram page, and make sure that you follow us there. And we will have an announcement tomorrow. It's on Thursdays. And you can um, enter to win um, on our Instagram page. And you can also go to the Quilted Joy Facebook page, and you can enter to win there. Um, so watch those. It'll be Thursday. And you'll, you'll just put it in the comments. And then we will announce and send you five yards of fabric um, that are all coordinated along with a, um, a free pattern as well. Anything else that came up? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so the, the link that Olivia added included a thread stem tool, um, which is a groovy new product that is super inexpensive, but will allow your domestic machine to use um, cones of thread. So cones of thread, you know, are, are a great value. There's lots more thread um, at a lower price per yard on a cone of thread. But some domestic machines don't have a thread tree built into the machine to allow you to run a cone of thread. And so this thread stem tool is, um, it, it goes onto a domestic machine and allow you to have a cone sitting beside your machine and it can go up. There's a little hole in the thread stem tool and then that will allow you to to use threads the way you normally do is just off of a big old cone instead of a little small spool much better value for your dollar and it's a pretty inexpensive little item to have um, in your studio for your domestic machine yeah great little invention yeah any other questions um, that looks to be all 
Oh, good. All right, you guys had some good questions. You know, and then again, you know, join me for our Ask Me Anything if you got more questions, and we'll we'll chat um, there on March 16th. Um, I do want to thank our sponsor, APQS. Um, APQS machines are 100% handcrafted in Iowa. They're loved the world over, and they come with a lifetime warranty. So quilt forever with APQS. Um, we're so thankful to APQS, and if you are interested in learning more about an APQS long arm machine, you can give us a call. We are APQS dealers here at Quilted Joy. You can also contact your local APQS dealer, your local APQS store, or head over to APQS.com and get all of your questions answered. So thank you so much, APQS. We love you. All right, I have a wonderful Looky Loo tour to show you. I can't wait for you guys to see this. It's from Denise, um, Denise Short. So let's take a look at her room. You're going to love it. Hi, Denise. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Angela. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, tell me where, where you are located. Where am I talking to you at? Uh, we are in northwestern Ohio. Um, the nearest town to me is Archibald, Ohio. Uh, so it's about 30 miles from Indiana, about 30 miles from Michigan. So we're way up there in the corner. Awesome. And are you in, I'm already distracted by how beautiful your walls are. It's got like shiplap on it. Are you yes. in a bedroom? Are you in a in like exterior building? Actually, this was new construction. I had my machine for about a year and I was in what had been my parlor. We live in an old home and I had what they call the parlor. And it was just big enough for my machine and my sewing machine. And as my husband would say, you walked in and you backed out. <laughs> and uh, so during COVID, uh, about, when was it? Uh, in July of 2020, we talked about it and decided we would do this. So this was completed. It, I haven't even been in here a year. It was completed the end of January last year. Awesome. All right. Well, turn so, the camera around because I can't wait to see it. Okay. So oh, I just is, that zip lap on the wall is so pretty. Well, you know, we have an older home and I wanted something on my walls that I could um, hang up things and not have to worry about patching. Uh -huh. And my contractor uh, was very obliging. And my two requests were I wanted 12 foot ceilings. I wanted the ship lap. I guess it was three. And I wanted these windows. Oh, look at that. Oh, and you've got rocking chairs. Where you well, yeah, sit. I went around my house and gathered up stuff that was sitting in corners and put yeah. out here. Oh, that's and, glorious. Uh, so the windows on a sunny day, wow. it's just glorious in here. Oh, my goodness. And I love, too, you've got um, a, a, a floor that you can sweep up thread bunnies so oh, easily. Absolutely. I yeah. did not want carpet okay so show us okay. show us your space because i okay. see so many things that are interesting to me all right well i'm going to do i'm going to step up here this is where i come out from my husband's office it goes into the house uh -huh. when you stand up here yeah you can kind of get a nice overview of... oh i love it it's like the room greets you yes so over this way to our right, I have doors to the outdoor, or yes, to the outdoors so that I can mm -hmm. have my friends come in there and they don't have to go through my house. Yeah. And I have all these nice windows. Yeah. And straight ahead is my storage. And Fantastic. I'm in, I'm process. I wanted to live in my space for a period of time before I went and did a lot of purchasing of my cutting table, my forever sewing center. Uh -huh. And uh, that was on my bucket list, or I shouldn't say my bucket list, but my list to go to uh, the APQS show and check out all the vendors. And I haven't done that because yeah. I want to see it before I buy it. Sure. Well, show me your cutting table, if you would, Denise, because it looks like you've got bed risers um, yes. under it. These are just, um, actually, it's just two tables from Walmart mm -hmm. and I put oh them so they're right folding inside. tables yes uh -huh. and I put uh I put I'll get closer here I put the uh a mat mat on it yeah. and then I have the risers perfect 
So I would like, to, I've seen some on Clubhouse that I would really like to do. Uh -huh. So I'm in the process of figuring out what I do, but this works for now. It works for sure. me. Yeah, sure. And, right, and then uh, you've got your sewing space over there with yep. um, a place now, that you can this press. Was, yes, this uh -huh. was um, Ikea shelving that I had in my other room for storage. Yeah. Yeah. And an Ikea table that I had. Yeah. And then I made the purchase of the So Easy table mm -hmm. um, so I could get my machine at a level where it was really good. And with mm -hmm. the tables and that Ikea table behind, I have a nice sewing space when I'm you doing do. big quilts, putting my binding on and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So go to the left. Let's see what's to the left there. Well, that's my ironing board and it's just my old... 40 year old ironing board. <laughs> yeah. And then I yeah. see you've got like a cricket. Is that what that is? Oh, you've got a, oh, a TV. Oh, no, that's my AccuQuilt. An AccuQuilt. Okay, my got it. My die cutting machine. Yes. And, oh, and uh, you've got all your dies there as well. Yes, I do. And yeah. I, I love that a lot. <laughs> uh huh. Beautiful. So. And then um, what machine do you have there? Okay. I have the APQS. Freddy with mm -hmm. a quilt path. Uh-huh. And I have a 10 foot table. 10 foot. And do you like yes. that size table, a 10 foot table? You know, I've only been asked to quilt two quilts that were larger than my table. And I have mm -hmm. some friends who do have larger tables and I just mm -hmm. refer them to that. Um, mm -hmm. So this has met all of my needs. Perfect. And you've got the overhead lights. Yes. Yeah. Of course, you've got so much light in there with those windows, too. My goodness. Yes, I do. But I also have 16 LED daylights in the ceiling. Wow. <laughs> so at night, if I come out, it's pretty bright. <laughs> yeah, you're glowing, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. And I love, so you've got a quilt ladder there as well. I love how you've incorporated displaying quilts and enjoying quilts in your eye view as you're working on new quilts. That's well, beautiful. Well, this is my happy place. And I just put all the things that I love out here. That rack that we're looking at ahead of me uh -huh. is my quilts to be quilted. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there. Denise, I would love to come over and sit in your rocking chair and flip through your magazines and your quilt books and chat. That looks beautiful. What a great space you have. It is a great space. So <laughs> there's all the I magazines I'm going to flip through. I can see them now. Oh, yeah. Those are my <laughs> magazines. There's my storage cupboard. Uh huh. And uh, the stairs to the up to the, the other part stairs. of the house. That's the entryway from the outside. Uh huh. With more quilts on that other quilt ladder. And this one here is, yes, for quilts that are finished. Fantastic. Well, Denise, can you turn the camera around so we can see your smiling face? Absolutely. Well, Denise, what are, what's three things that you would recommend to your bestie? They don't have to be quilt related, but what are three things that you'd recommend right now? Well, I am an avid tea drinker and I love the Harney and Sons hot cinnamon tea. It's just my, my favorite tea and my hands get pretty dry from handling all the fabric. So I use a CeraVe hand cream, which helps keep my hands from being so dry and snaggly. And the one quilt thing that I have found that I think you recommended was the Cinch uh, needle auto automatic threading. And it is great for burying those threads on my quilts. Yeah, it has a, it's a side threading, a side threading needle. So you don't have to poke it through the eye. It kind of does it itself. Yes. Yes. So nice. And it's so handy. Well, good. So. Well, thank you so much, Denise, for showing me your space. It's absolutely glorious. And um, if I'm ever in your area, now I know which door to knock on and what chair I'm going to sit in. Absolutely. Well, thank <laughs> you for having me and letting me share. All right. Well, we'll see you around in the clubhouse. Okay. Thank you. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Denise. I loved seeing your space. You know, so many times we look at a quilting space that's designed for the quilter, wonderful, fabulous, but don't you love how Denise also considered like, 
where her friends were going to sit while they came over to play in her in her playground. Um, she's got that outside door where they can come right in and be welcomed into her little quilt world. And all of that light, all that natural light, oh my goodness, what a wonderful space. Thank you so much, Denise, for letting us into your sewing world. I really appreciate it. All right, I wanna show you some of the new things that have come into the shop lately. And we've been talking about how panels can be such a great bridge, such a great way to practice with rulers and free motion, all of that. And it's very low key because you haven't spent a lot of time piecing it. So I wanna show you this one. This one just came in. It is Little Darling. And there's two different um, kits that are made from this uh, panel. So first, um, the panel itself is, don't you love this little elephant? It's all like a watercolor is what it looks like. And you can use the these panels, this particular one, you could use it as a pillow, but we also have it kitted up where um, you can use it um, for an actual, for a quilt. So there's our little elephant over here is our Lion King. Isn't he adorable? He's got a little crown and his little toe beans down here. Just absolutely adorable. And then the other one that's in the same grouping that would be in that kit too, include this wobbly um, zebra with the long teenage legs, right? We're just learning how to walk. Um, and then look at this adorable um, giraffe over here with the little tongue out. Super cute. He's got a little birdie friend, sits on his back. So that is the Little Darlings quilt kit number two. And then this one is the panel that's in the quilt kit number one. So these are a little smaller. Can't you see where you could practice your ditch work here? So there's our elephant. And then here's a ferret. Isn't he cute? A femur? Oh, good. I was like, it's not a femur. <laughs> it's a lemur? It's not a ferret? It's a meerkat. Okay. Yet again, I need, I need some help in the zoology department. Um, there's a hippo. I know what a hippo is. And there's a bird. And then there's our sweet little lion. I don't, let me pull it up here, Kelsey, because I, I don't think I can get it that close. Look, there, uh, there's our rhino, our sweet orangutan with a um, little um, butterfly in her hair. There's our zebra. And there's another sweet little lion. And then this bottom one has got that, let me go up one more. It has that giraffe in it and another lion and a mercat and the zebra. So this one, there's a kit that you can use for it, um, that you can use with it. And you can cut those panels out and use them as actual blocks. And then you can practice your ditch work. So we love this panel. It just came in. It's, it's brand new. Um, it's a great way to play and to practice. Um, so um, I, if you have enjoyed the Quilted Joy Clubhouse, here we are on year three, um, the, the, the biggest and best kudos you could send to us would be to share this with someone that you think would find it helpful or valuable. So share it with a friend. That's the, the best compliment you could possibly give. And if you could go over and leave us a review on Google, um, it helps the big Google algorithm decide whether or not to serve us up to people when they're looking for um, quilting information. So when you put a, um, a review in there of us, it helps our little business grow. And I read every one of them personally, and I appreciate your time in doing that. Um, it really does make a difference. So thank you so much. All right, so in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse, there on Facebook, each month we put a call out for people to submit a photo of an unquilted quilt top and then I pick a quilt top and show you how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. And this month we got so many people who submitted some absolutely gorgeous quilts. So um, I just picked one, but be sure you go over to the clubhouse and see all of the other beautiful quilt tops that were submitted. Absolutely stunning. Some of them are absolutely stunning. So the quilt top that I picked is from LaDonna. And let's take a look at it. So LaDonna says that this is actually, it's a memorial quilt. All of those hearts were made from shirts of a gentleman who passed and she um, made quilts for the kids and the grandchildren of this uh, gentleman. And I mean, what a keepsake. This one she says is for the granddaughter. And so she was asking how to quilt it. LaDonna, I absolutely love this. I love that all of that, um, you know, grandpapa love is in this, um, um, this quilt, what a keepsake um, you have blessed this family with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in because I want to show you how I used or what I thought about um, doing in these hearts. 
So I'm going to just move over here. And by the way, I am using a, a program called GIMP. It is a free program. It's an open source program. And then I'm drawing with a tablet um, that's called, Wait, it's by Wacom. It's just um, an inexpensive, I think it cost me like $60. It's not um, the big fancy ones they make. And it allows me to draw on, um, on photos. So LaDonna, when I was looking at this heart, one thing that struck out to me is you have these um, you have a seam here down the middle, which is really going to be helpful as we consider how to um, break this heart up into smaller pieces to be quilted more easily. And so that um, seam kind of gives us a registration line that's pretty easy to then take advantage of. And so the first thing I thought of was I'd really like to go in here and just do a nice round, almost make a whole circle. And then just before I make a whole circle, I'm going to come out and do a little spike and then a spike right to that seam. And when I hit that seam, then I'm gonna go with a small arc down. And now I'm gonna do the other side of that heart, almost a whole circle. There's a spike. I'm gonna come and touch that seam and then head down. And then I thought, LaDonna, I really thought this empty space here, like what if, what if I put a heart in that little empty space? Like that seemed to, it, it, it almost like, I don't know, it felt like a hug to me, like the two arms and a hug to me, which is I know what the whole purpose of this is, is to, to have the granddaughter feel the hug of her grandfather who's passed. And so that, that seems super appropriate to me. Okay, so let's take a look then. If we're gonna put a heart there, how we would do that. So I'm just gonna redo this. So I would come up, almost a whole circle, spike, touch that seam, I would go ahead and do my heart, and then I would hop down. Now this side, almost a whole circle. I know I went off there. And then this gives me a chance to drop down. Now, LaDonna, I, I don't really know how big this is. I don't know if I could get two hearts in one pass, but if I could get two hearts in one pass, that is when I would drop down and I would do this. Now, of course, LaDonna, that means you're going to have to do this upside down, right, if you have this on a long arm machine, but I believe in you. I'm going to do my heart, and I'm going to head down. And don't worry about making each side of this the same. It'll all work out. If you can't, LaDonna, do both of these, fit both of these in one pass, no worries. I'm going to show you how to do it a little bit differently here in just a second. Okay, so let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm gonna zoom out. So LaDonna, there's all of those hearts with the little mini hearts inside, like they're giving a little hug. And then what I started looking at were these interior diamond spaces. And what could I do with those interior diamond spaces? All right, I'm gonna zoom back in. And I'm gonna come over here. And it's going to be easier to show you because the photo kind of cuts off on this first diamond it's going to be easier to show you on the second diamond am i zoomed in enough kelsey is it okay a little more is that better okay so what i would do first when i'm at this point here is i would go ahead and ditch this ladonna i would go ahead and nail that down so i'm going to go all the way around and ditch that and then i'm going to go in to this um well, it's not really a four patch. Um, it's an hourglass block. And on this hourglass, I'm just going to do lowercase e, lowercase e, lowercase e, lowercase e. And then I'm going to come out about halfway and head up to this seam. So if you look, it might not be as obvious, but just so you know, the construction of the quilt, there's a seam here, 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 here that's already there. So I'm using those for my, my um, where I stop with my ruler. So I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to go up and down and back. So let's think about that. That means there's two lines of stitching here and there's two lines of stitching here. So it's even, right? It's a double line of stitching there and there. So it's even. I'm back in the middle. I'm going to head to here. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go out. Now I'm to the next one ditch, 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 in, E, 
E, E, E, midway, up, out, in, midway, in, out, ditch, 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 ditch. So I'm doing one half the north side first. I'm going to come out to the midway, go up to the seam, go out, in, back to the midpoint, in, out. All right, I'm going to go ditch, 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 into the hourglass, lowercase e, lowercase e, lowercase e, lowercase e, come out to the mid, up to the seam, out, in, midpoint, down. Now I'm ready to do this ditch. Notice how I can make the seam block float with LaDonna's border. So I'm going to go ahead and create the same frame floating out into the border. I'm going to go into the middle, hourglass, E, 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 to the midpoint, and then go up to the seam, up, down, midpoint. Okay, so now I have done all of the north side. And by the way, LaDonna, if you don't have enough room to do these hearts in one pass, this is the point where I would stop and roll forward because as I hit my south side of these frames, I could also hit the south side of these twin hearts. So I'm going to head back to that seam, out, in, to the midline, midline, over, over. And so I want you to see that because this is the second time I've crossed this point here and the second time I've crossed this point here, that way it's even. It's the same thickness of thread around the rest of my frame. It's now balanced. So I've hit the seam, I'm gonna go out, in, back to the midline, up, over, Midline, seam, up, down, midline, over. And I'm just going to work my way back along the south side. And if I needed to, when I cross here, this is where I could come down and do this heart if need be, if I don't have enough room. All right, let me zoom out because I want you to see what this looks like. All done. So there you go, there's my hearts, and there's those floating frames out into the border around. So then I started looking at these smaller diamonds. And what can I do with those smaller diamonds? So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna go over. And so what I, what I wanna do is, again, float those squares, those on-point squares out into the border. So I'm gonna ditch ditch, 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 ditch. And when I get to here, I'm just gonna do a loop to the north, a loop to the south, and then go to the next one. Ditch, 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 a loop to the north, a loop to the south, and then I'm gonna head on. So I'm ditching, and then I'm traveling through the center. And then I'm ditching, and then I'm traveling through the center all the way across. Now this top one, let's look at the super duper top one. Again, because it is out here in that border, I, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and have it expand into that border. Loop, loop, and over. Create my own block in the border with the quilting and head on loop to the north, loop to the south. And I will say, LaDonna, that I would probably load this short ways the way I have it here, just because of my little brain. Um, it would be difficult for me to do those hearts laying if they were mounted um, long ways. I need them to be oriented north-south from my little brain. You might be able to do it oriented laying um, east-west. I need it north-south. All right, one other thing to talk about as I'm doing those is when I get to the end here on the ends, I would go ahead and do the same thing. 
I would go ahead and put one here, right? Loop to the north, loop to the south, so all of that too. All right, let me zoom out because I want you to see what that looks like. So let me turn off that one and turn off that one. Okay, all right, LaDonna, there you go. That is, now let's deal with your borders. And then what can we do with your borders? And I thought really what I would like to do is just do these triangle spikes. So um, I thought if I could get, I'll just start with this one. Let me zoom in so that you can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna move it over. So I thought for those border designs, if I could actually go from, well, we'll start here. If I could go and create this border design and go over and have these little spikies, I thought that would be, it would draw those out. It would draw those blocks out with the eye. So um, when I, well, let me turn on the one that I have. Okay, so there's what I did. And let's take a look over here on the side. I just did the same thing. I just echoed those frames as well as those smaller diamonds. Same idea. And then what I thought was how, how am I going to like combine? What am I gonna do with this negative space? And really what I thought would be lovely would be to just, and easy, would be to just kind of mimic those uh, north-south loops and just put loops in here. All right, so let's take a look at that, LaDonna. I'm gonna do the whole shebang now, and I'm gonna zoom out. Oh, because I want you to see too, LaDonna, how I did it on the sides. So again, just the loops and those negative spaces all the way down. All right, so here you go, LaDonna. That is how I would quilt your quilt if it were my quilt, LaDonna. I hope you like it. And I would love to see what you do, LaDonna. It is your quilt. You do whatever you like, however you want to make it special. That's how I would do it. I love this idea. I love the, the creating a quilt from a loved one's clothing to snuggle up with on the couch. Um, she's going to cherish it for a long time. And I would love to see um, exactly what you come up with, uh, LaDonna. Um, so... I have, we have also folks who have posted in the clubhouse quilts that they have finished this month. And so I just wanna show you some of the quilts that were posted um, in the clubhouse so we can give everybody a big round of applause for all of their hard work. So for our show and tell segment, take a look at that, Suzanne. Suzanne, you knocked me out. Suzanne took all of those grids that we talked about in 2021 and then played. Can you tell that she had a good time with this? Um, absolutely love it, Suzanne. Um, you did a, a fabulous job. Looks really, really gorgeous. Um, let me see if I can get it. There you go. And then um, Virginia, um, she says that she tries to finish at least one of her own projects each month, and her UFO for this month was quilting and binding um, these quilts for her grandson that are due in May. The smaller one is to be given when he's a baby, and the larger one when he turns eight, and all it needs is quilt labels, and she can't wait to um, give them to her, to her grandson. Um, Dottie is, um, I don't think that these notes are actually for these quilts. Um, I think I have the wrong piece of paper to go with these quilts. So let's just look at what we got here, but um, I have the wrong notes that go with these. So take a look at Dottie. Dottie did all these um, cute little gnomes. And um, so I want you to notice how she went over her gnomes. She didn't go around her gnomes. She went over her gnomes. And isn't it great? Like, don't think you have to go around applique. You can travel on top of that applique and it'll look great. So she did loops on those uh, twin gnomes there, just a wavy line on that bottom right gnome. Absolutely adorable, Dottie so great. Debbie um, made this quilt out of some um, photos, some photos that were printed on fabric, and I can tell you had a good time with it, Debbie. Um, so somebody likes uh, cars, likes old cars, and uh, you celebrated their love of cars with that quilt. Really great. Roger sent this one in, and Roger um, has been playing with feathers, and it's been fun to watch um, Roger's skills grow in the feather arena, and I can tell that you are um, having a whole lot of fun, Roger. I love how you just played and had those spines cross over your half square triangles really great job um, Stephanie put this one in and Stephanie has um, loops and she's got her um, her snowflake so an all over edge to edge on on this design with a white thread looks gorgeous 
Chris, holy cow, Chris. Um, so take a look at those um, orange peel designs and then take a look at the outside edge. So she did that amazing cable with the feathers and then she filled it in with just straight lines on the outside. Um, a really great way to set it off. And then I want you to notice around her um, interior um, square there, she's got dense micro stippling and how that pushes the um, quilt away from you and allows those lovely curly lines to come forward. Um, Chris, you did an amazing job. Wonderful. Um, Joy posted this one and um, she did some um, great, our ladybug on a roller coaster in those uh, checkerboards. And then she did beadboard uh, work there in that outer border um, that is um, all scalloped outer border. Uh, that's fabulous, Joy. I know that's not easy. You did a great job. And then those stars in the main blocks. Tina um, put this one in. Tina did an all over edge to edge with this uh, gorgeous quilt. And um, I'm, it seems like I remember what that, I can't remember what that particular pattern is called, Tina. You'll have to put it there in the clubhouse so we can figure out what your edge to edge pattern was uh, is. It's really beautiful in that quilt. Um, Marie, I love this with the E there and um, a cute little baby quilt made for a special special person um, there's tammy's quilt that she put in and her beadboard um, that she used in that outside edge is kind of a wiggly squiggly like um like the fireworks going off um, really effective and all of those little tiny spaces in a quilt like this can be so intimidating but look at what tammy did in um, all those small spaces um, really great job tammy i know that you enjoyed that as well um, debbie posted this one and debbie uh, there's so much much great stuff going on here. So sometimes those log cabin quilts can be a little intimidating and look at how she used curves on those log cabin quilts to give them such grace and um, beauty and then use those outside um, vines to kind of carve out space and give her a spine for feather work. Um, and then it looks like, I can't really tell Debbie, but it looks like those outside Dresden plates are 3D, but maybe it's just from the, um, the density of the loft of your batting. Um, but if they are 3D, hats off to you, because I know that was a struggle to get around because you don't want to nail them down too much. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're 3D just because of the shadowing. So um, really amazing work, uh, Debbie, really great. So thank you so much for posting um, there in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. You know, I'm nosy, so I want to know what you're working on. So post what you're working on, because I would love to see it. And I'd love to, you know, clap for you and, um, and celebrate your, um, your finishes. Um, so next month on Wednesday, April the 6th, 1 o'clock Eastern, we are going to um, talk about piano keys and beadboards. So you saw some of that already in some of those photos that we were looking at. It's a really great way to use rulers on the outside borders of a quilt, especially if you have a monster border. If you're looking at a border and you're like, holy cow, that's a big one. Um, then many times piano keys is the perfect thing or beadboard is the perfect thing to put out there because you can combine it with other patterns, other design motifs as well. So we're gonna play a lot with piano keys, especially talking about how you turn a corner um, when doing piano keys. So join me. Wednesday, April 6th at one o'clock Eastern. You can also join us on social. So you can join us over on our Quilt of Joy Instagram page. We have a lot of great photos from our renters and quilts that are being done here in the shop there on Instagram. You can join us, of course, on our Facebook page, our Quilt of Joy Facebook page. And then don't forget, we do have that Facebook group, the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse. And um, lots of great things are posted in there. We have a good time with our community. There's some really wonderful supportive quilters in there. And then of course you can find all of our videos and past episodes of the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse over on our YouTube channel, at Quilt, our Quilt of Joy YouTube channel. And then um, join me for that live chat on March 16th, one o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you guys later.